Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Good morning. Welcome to Morning Cup of Jesus. I'm your host, Minister Edward Broom. Without further ado, let's get started, shall we? <clears throat> Father God in heaven, it's in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you for another day, Lord God. Thank you, God, for putting me to sleep last night, giving me a rest and waking me up this morning. Thank you for those who, who watch and listen, Lord God, and those who, who seek you early. Thank you, God, for their hearts, that they desire you, Lord God, above all other things and all other people, Lord God. Thank you for the word on yesterday, Lord God, from the guest preacher. Help me, Lord God, to take heed to your word. Help us all to take heed to your word, Lord God, whenever it's presented to us. Help us, God, to follow your voice, not a stranger's voice, not the enemy's voice, Lord God, not our own voice in our own heads. God, let your voice be that be that uh, resounding, distinguished voice, Lord God, that we follow so that we may adhere to your word, Lord God, your will, your standard, your ways. <clears throat> now, God, use me as the vessel that you put the word in this morning. And Lord, God, use me as, as the messenger who delivers your word. Speak, Lord, and your servants are listening. Give us what you want us to have, Lord God. Help us to receive it, to retain it, and to relay that information. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> amen and amen. All right, today's scripture is coming from Amos chapter 7, verses 7 through 10. 
It ain't right. Yeah, I hope that's the right thing. Amos chapter 7, verses 10 through 17. Oh, man, I put the wrong verse in there. Lord, Lord, Lord. Amos chapter 7, verses 10 through 17. Amos chapter 7, verse 10 through Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to Jeroboam, king of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the midst of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel shall surely be led captive from their own land. Then Amaziah said to Amos, Go. You see her, flee to the land of Judah. There eat bread and there prophesy, but never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary and it is the royal residence. Then Amos answered and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor was I a son of a prophet, but I was a sheep breeder and a tender of sycamore fruit. Then the Lord took me as I followed the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. Now therefore, hear the word of the Lord. You say, Do not prophesy against Israel, and do not spout against the house of Isaac. Therefore, <laughs> therefore, thus says the Lord God, Your wife shall be a harlot in the city, your sons and daughters shall fall by the sword, your land shall be divided by a survey line. You shall die in a defiled land. And Israel shall surely be led away captive from his own land. May the Lord bless the readers, the hearers, and especially the doers of his holy word. Y'all bear with me for one moment here, man. I'm... <clears throat> Trying to get this stuff together here. I'm sorry. Somehow, somehow I sent out the wrong verses. I want to get them out before, before I be online for an hour. <laughs> With everybody reading the wrong verses, it's going to take me about 30 more seconds of the Lord will to send out the right verses. I mistakenly sent out Amos chapter uh, 7, verses 7 through 10. When today's verse is Amos chapter 7. Verses 10 through 17. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I kept on saying it. it Sound like 17, 17. 17, 17. And so it, it, uh, it got kind of a... Uh, chapter 7, verse 10 through 17 is the right verses. And so... As disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, we bear witness to what he did in our lives and to what he did in the lives of others we know. And we also bear witness to the word of God. The enemy hates this. The enemy hates that we bear witness of God's word, that we bear witness of what God did in our lives, and that we bear witness of what God did in other people's lives. He hates this and he also hates you. The enemy hates you. That's why he lies. Proverbs chapter 26, verse 28 says, um, um, a lying tongue hates those who are crushed by it. And, and therefore, this just shows that the enemy hates you. If he didn't hate you, he wouldn't tell you a lie. And I say this same thing when I'm preaching too. I say, uh, if you if somebody lying to you, 
uh, they hate you. Because the, you know why? Because the word of God says it. If somebody would tell you, yeah, man, go ahead on, commit that sin, it's fine. The Lord understand about you committing sin. I believe they lying to you because they hate you and they want you to be destroyed. When the Lord destroy all those sins, they want you to be destroyed right along with those sins. And so, and so, uh, the enemy hates this. He hates that you bear witness to the word of God and to, and to the, to what he did in your life, what he did in other people's life. And he also hates you. That's why he constantly lies to you and distorts the truth. If God said it, you can believe it. If God said it, you can believe it. From the beginning, Satan was lying and deceiving people, just as he attempted to use Amaziah to lie and deceive Amos. Uh, from the beginning, remember way back in the book of Genesis, I want to, in Genesis, I want to say chapter three, that's where I think of it, where it all, that's where the fall of man took place in Genesis chapter three, when, um, when, when Satan peeked his head, I'm said, when, when Satan appeared in the Bible and said, um, uh, uh, did the Lord really say you can't eat that fruit and, 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 and that certain tree? And then, and then the woman said, uh. Uh, yeah, we eat the tree. We eat all the fruit of the tree, but just not that one else we're going to die even if we touch it. And then Satan said, you ain't going to surely die. See that? Satan said, you're not going to die. He said, if you eat it, you're going to be wise like God and this and that. You're going to this and that, this and that. He was already lying and deceiving people from the beginning. And he tried to, to use Amaziah to deceive Amos. However, Satan's scheme did not work because Amos obeyed what the Lord said instead of what man said. Oftentimes, we have the word of God sitting right in front of us, but we still go and do what somebody else say. I mean, the word of God be right there. That's why it's good to 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 uh to attend a a a Bible teaching uh church, a Bible preaching church, a, a church that doesn't take one verse and then talk about it for an hour. You know what I'm saying? Without any more scripture to support it, without showing what the word of God says, because you could take one verse and then put your own, uh, take it out of context or twist it into to suit your own personal needs. I can take the Bible. I can take verses out the Bible and have them to, to suit my own personal needs or my own selfish desires. And I won't even be telling a lie. You know what I'm saying? I, I won't even be telling you a lie. I just be using, I can, I can use it for personal gain. And that's what some people do with the word of God. And therefore, you must uh, you must not let one verse uh, be taken out of context. And, and, and to fool you, you got to be able to look at the word of God and read it for yourself. And you have, and I think you need to have other resources too. You know, other stuff like a study Bible that breaks it down. Uh, watch other sermons and see different perspectives on scripture. Because there's two sides of every coin. I'm talking about in the believing family. There, in, within the body of believers, there's people who believe certain things and other people who believe certain things, and all of them believe and follow the Lord Jesus Christ. All of, none, of, none, none of this group of people is trying to do it for selfish gain, but they have two different opinions about what the Word of God says. Now, I take the Word of God, I look at it, and I literally uh, uh, think it should, I think we should literally do what, what it says we can literally do. Some things are spiritual. Some things are literal. Now, now, uh, and some things are metaphorical. There's a metaphor. Well, now, now, when Jesus say, pluck out your eye because of you to see him. Now, I believe you can pluck it out. I don't believe I can pluck out mine. I can't, man, I'd be falling asleep and in in, uh, in driving. I can't slap myself hard. I don't even know how to do it. I don't know how to harm myself. You know, so I don't know, but I think it is possible to hurt yourself. Some people can inflict pain on themselves. But I also believe that they're speaking metaphor. It may be speaking lit literal or metaphorical. Um, Jesus might be saying, um, if there's something, um, say pornography, say 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 pornography is your problem. You know what I'm saying? And you got magazines. People don't got magazines no more. But they this this they still make it. You got a bunch of uh, pornography magazines. Um, if it's causing you to sin, causing you to lust, causing your body to to uh to to do things that it's only supposed to do with your spouse, where well, you need to take those, grab, pluck out those magazines and toss them in the trash can. You know what I'm saying? Um, if your phone is causing you to do it, you need to take measures to prevent you from going into that temptation. If the only way you can do it is by blinding yourself, then maybe you need to blind yourself. If the only way you can stop from 
committing that sin is by not being able to see at all when maybe maybe when the Lord said plug out your eye, you need to plug it out. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know what I'm saying? And so, but what I'm what I mean is the Bible is the standard. When somebody to if somebody you want me to keep on with this same scripture right here. If somebody said, Well, he don't really mean that. He really means just to just to go away from it or to avoid it or or once you fall into it, it's fine. Man, Jesus don't like sin. The Lord God Almighty does not like sin. So it's not no okay, continue in it. The the, the Bible tells us more than one occasion. Shall we continue in sin? No. The Bible also tells us, that's what Romans, Paul said in Romans chapter 6. But but Paul also tells us, he says, uh, and, and such were some of you, but you have been washed, but you've been clean. See, you were a sinner until God came and washed you and cleaned you and stopped you from doing all those things. He says, no idolaters and liars and thieves and murderers and homosexuals and effeminate and, and this and that and drunkards and liars and this and that. He go to name and all these things said, these people are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. And you were the, some of these people. Not you are. He didn't say you are still these people. He said you are some of these people. And if the word of God sets the standard and said, that's who you were before Christ Jesus, that's what it means. That's who you were before Christ Jesus. If that's still who you are, then maybe you're not in Christ Jesus. See there? That's who you were before Christ Jesus. And if that's who you still are, then maybe you're not in Christ Jesus. Because the Lord Jesus Christ, when he comes in up, and, 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 and when he comes into our life, and when and when we and when we uh when we live in him, that we we have the Holy Spirit who 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 who, who convicts us, who 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 tells us when we're doing wrong. The Holy Spirit who is grieved when we commit sin. See what I'm saying? When we commit sin, the Holy Spirit is grieved. And it don't feel good. It don't feel good. You don't like it. You don't like the aftermath. You 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 even talk to you while you're doing it. You know, and you, you just, it, it 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 ain't it ain't right. Don't feel good. You don't want to do it. it none of the, none of the above. And so the word of God, uh, uh, the word of God must be the standard. And, and Satan uses lies and he uses people and he uses di different portions of the word of God to distort the truth and deceive people. And and, and 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 um, the best thing we can do is just do what the Word of God says. And you have to you have to have discernment. You got to pray for discernment, just like I'm using the plucking out the eye part. Somebody can tell you don't do anything, and it's just if why would Jesus say if you don't do anything about it? You have to do something. If Jesus say pluck out your eye if it's causing you to sin, that means you need to do something. If it's not sticking your hand in and plucking out your eye, it's removing. Whatever it is that's causing you to see him. That's what that means. But if you let somebody tell you, no, ignore that, you need to leave that church. If somebody tell you, ignore the word of God, when Jesus said, get rid of whatever causing you to sin, you need to leave that church. If that's what the preacher is telling you. Do not ignore the word of God. And that's that's basically what I'm saying. I know I said a lot about plucking out eyes and stuff, but Jesus is saying, whatever causing you to sin, cut it off from you. Whatever it is. Whatever causing you to sin, cut it off from you. Cut yourself off from me. Get it out of your life. Get it out of your eyesight. Get it out of your mind. Get it out of your heart. Get it out of your hand. Get it away from you if it's causing you to sin. It's better to, to be without that thing and go into heaven than to continue holding on to it and perish. That's what Jesus says. And this is what the word of God says, but the devil distorts that. He distorts the truth. He tells us all kind of things. Sound good. Look good, feel good, smell good. That's what the devil does. And the, and the whole time, he's telling lies. Um, he was a liar from the beginning. <clears throat> he, the devil was a liar from the, from the beginning, but he, tra and he tried to lie to Amos to get Amos to stop prophesying, to get Amos to not do what the Lord told him to do. Um, but instead, Amos obeyed what the... Lord said instead of what man said. Amos did what the word of the Lord said to him instead of what Amaziah. Amaziah came and told him something that the devil was trying to use Amaziah to trick him. And so there is a voice that tells us to obey the word of God, 
the will of God and the ways of God. You hear me? There is a voice that tells us to obey the word of God, the will of God, and the ways of God. But there is also a voice that tells us that the word of God is altered, that the will of God is for us to do as we please, and that the ways of God are whatever we think is right. Do that sound familiar? That's exactly what's going on today. There's, there's, a, there's a voice that says the word of God passed down through so many generations and it, it, it's altered and it's not right. You want to know why they say that? Because they don't want to do what it says do. People who, man, I see people I love. Even people who, man, 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 call me a fool. But I believe the, the Holy Bible is the word of God. I don't care what books were omitted. I don't care what books were, were this and what books were that. I believe them 66 books, Genesis to Revelation, are the word of God. I don't care about the gospel of Peter, the gospel of Thomas. I don't care about the book of Maccabees. I don't care about <laughs> Bill and the dragon. I read that other stuff. I read that stuff. You know, I, I read that stuff. And what does it have to offer? Didn't have anything. I didn't get anything from it. I might have. I don't think I read through all of the apocryphal books. I have an apocryphal. Though. I got an apocryphal right. I got an apocryphal right there. There it is, right there. And you know, I read through it, but I need. I really need a new King James because it's, it's King James. I read through it, but it didn't, it didn't add anything to my walk with the Lord. I remember once I looked through it and got some stuff out. Of it, I said, "Oh, this could, this this oh this kind of try to make a." A sermon out of it or something, you know, and, and I'm not, but I don't, I, there's a reason. There's a reason why those were not included in the, in the, in the canonized word of God. You know, all of it don't, all of it doesn't, all of it isn't consistent with the 66 books. People want to say that the, the Catholics took this out, the Roman Catholic added this and the other people took this out. And, and I mean, and, 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 and so, but you, but you look at how the Catholic uh, 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 doctrine is. They doing things that don't seem right. You want to know why? Because it come, because everybody have to have to have to come up with their own uh, religion or their own sector or their own this and that. Paul says in First Corinthians chapter six, he says, "I planted, Apollo's watered, but God gave the increase." See, and he also says that. Uh, he said that you are you are you are you are still babes and you're still carnal when you're saying I'm of this group I'm of I'm I'm of Paul I'm of Apollos I'm of Christ I'm of Cephas I'm of this I'm of this he said are you not carnal are you not worldly when you do, making all these sectors and all these divisions you know what I'm saying and but man and that, I'm trying to say a whole lot right now he said but there are there must be factions to show what levels you at. But he don't think that there should be division within the body of Christ. Everybody should believe the same thing. And it's hard. It's hard. There are so many different sectors of, of Christianity right now that some people don't even believe in Christ. You can be a Christian and don't even believe in Christ. How is that even possible? How, how are you an American if you don't live in America? If you never and you never been to America, never set foot in America? Never born in America, but you're an American. How can you say, how can you be a Christian if you're not in Christ or if you don't believe in Christ? And so, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I know I'm saying a lot right now, but this is a passionate subject when it comes to uh, uh, people um, believing different things and people and, and, and other people believing some old thing and taking another doctrine and creating a, a different doctrine. And, and, and then some people saying, ignore the word of God. And some people are saying, well, this is the word of God. You ignore this so I can ignore what you're saying. It, it, may, it, it It's chaos. Because we, as, as believers and followers and disciples of Jesus Christ, as, because we do what unbelievers think is ignore the word of God, that's, that causes unbelievers to ignore the word of God as well. Because people who say that, people who, who are not really believers and they say they are, because they say they Christians and they do God knows everything that they can possibly do on this earth, it makes the unbelievers say, see, that's why I don't want to be like them Christians. You see what I'm saying? 
But a true follower of this of, of Jesus Christ, a true disciple of Jesus Christ, obeys his word. That's what you do. You obey his word and you don't make excuses for it. I don't make excuses for not obeying the word of God. I don't know what's gonna happen the last day. But I know the Lord gonna have a lot of people sitting there on the sideline who said who said the word of God is not the word of God. It's gonna be a lot of people sitting there on the side in the wrong line. And they're gonna be he's gonna say, All right, you come, you sit right over here. I'm about to show you what's gonna happen to you. Because you said the word of God and not the word of God. You didn't believe in Christ. And and you said you believe in Christ, but you didn't obey Christ's voice. You didn't obey his commands. You didn't love the Lord. You know, you didn't love the Lord. You didn't do, you didn't obey the Lord. And there's gonna be a lot of people on that day who are gonna be deceived. And they're they're and they're and they're and who are gonna be destroyed and because they're being deceived right now. And that's what I have a passion for. I have a passion for the truth, and I have a passion against false teachers, false prophets, false preachers. Anybody lying and deceiving people, I'm against that because that's of the devil. Satan was lying and deceiving people from the beginning of the word of God. And he, even in Revelation, he's still going to be lying and deceiving the nations. He's going to have a time where he's still going to deceive the nations from Genesis to Revelation. And then he's going to be destroyed. And I'm against that. I'm against anybody on this earth who deceiving people with lies and distorting the gospel, distorting the truth for personal gain, for ignorance gain, because they don't know no better. If you don't know any better, you ain't got no business preaching the word of God. I, I don't have sympathy for a person who deceiving somebody by mistake. Because you don't need to be up there preaching it then. You don't need to be, you, you shouldn't be in a teaching position if you if you don't know what you're teaching. If you haven't went and learned it, you shouldn't teach it. So I don't have sympathy for a false teacher or a false preacher or a false prophet doing something saying, well, I made a mistake. False prophets, wait, God's prophets don't make mistakes. If God give you a prophecy, you think God made a mistake by telling you that? You think he told you the wrong thing? No, it wasn't God you were listening to. And if you get it wrong one time, God ain't sent you. You need to sit down. One time. If you prophesy something wrong one time and say the Lord said this and you wrong about it, you need to sit down forever. That's how I feel. I don't have sympathy for false prophets, false teachers, false preachers. Learn what the Lord say and then share it with somebody else. A lot of subjects I don't teach because I haven't learned them. Somebody asked me something about something that I'm not 100% uh, solid on, what I'm what I'm not going to give them my opinion. I'm going to say, all right, let me get back with you. And I'm going to go and dig and dig and dig and find out what I can find out about it. I I don't listen to, I don't go listen to nobody else, else stuff when somebody asks me something. I just go get the Bible. I got enough resources. I go get my Bible. I get my, uh, my Nelson Study Bible. They give me the date it was written and who wrote it. Who, who the people were, what was going on around that time. I might get my uh, I might get my Greek Bible and, and look at the words and see what the words actually mean. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I might get my keyword study Bible and see where else is listed, see what the definitions of these words are and look and see where else the words are used in the passage in, in the Bible. You know, I put it all together. I got enough books and resources to, to dig and find out what the Lord is meaning right here in this thing. And I said, well, maybe it's meant for me to learn this part if somebody's questioning me about it and they want answers. That mean that, that maybe that means the Lord has, given, has appointed this time for me to learn this issue or this subject. You know what I'm saying? And so, and, and so that's what I do. And so if I ever teach or preach anything that's wrong, I, I if I ever teach or preach anything that's wrong, because I'm rushing to doing something, or, or it may be because I got a misunderstanding about it, I'll go back and I'll learn it. And then I preach it right. You know what I'm saying? But I think a false preacher, false teacher, somebody who ain't trying to learn it, somebody who's distorting it for their own personal gain, somebody who lying, somebody who lying, I don't really have sympathy for them, man. I really don't, man. I mean, because they, uh, you know, I just, it, there's other things to do besides distort the gospel. If you want to go do, if you want to go commit some sin, go and commit some sin. But don't drag other people into sin with you. I don't like people leading the sheep astray. I don't like people leading the sheep astray. I don't like people leading the sheep astray. 
But I have to say that, uh, ma'am, and I'm thinking this too. I'm thinking that when I take the word of God and I say, this is what it says. And then later on, I find out that's what it says, but it also means some more things. I said, well, I wonder, I wonder if, uh, if that's, if, if, if that's a means to sit down or whatever, that's a means to go and study more. But when you learn what it says and you still stick to the lie, you false prophet, false preacher. That I just, I, I, I'm gonna have to stick with that. I'm not gonna contradict my words. If I teach something wrong, somebody say you're teaching something wrong. It don't really mean that. I'll correct it. I'd rather get anybody tell me that even mean that. I don't know if people even go and look at what I, what I preach and teach and say, hey, this is right or this is wrong. You know what I'm saying? And so, and so, and so, there, that's where I stand with that right there. Satan is always trying to, trying to, trying to distort the truth, and he can use a, he can use preachers, he can use. Uh, believers, he can use unbelievers, he can use novices, he can even use, he can use anybody who's not listening to what God is saying, or somebody who, who might be distracted by something, you know what I'm saying, uh, there is a voice that tells us to obey the word of God, the will of God, oh yeah, the will of God, the, so, that, so, there's a voice that tells us that the word of God is altered, there's also a voice that, and that voice tells us that the will of God is for us to do as we please, that's a lie. God's will is not for us to do as we please. God's will is for you to be saved and for other people to be saved and to glorify him. That's what God's will is. It says it right there in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. It says, God desires that all men be saved that they, and that they come to the knowledge of truth and that there is only one Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the mediator. And then uh, uh, 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 8 or 9 or 8 and 9 say uh god is, is long suffering is patient with us not not wanting any of us to perish but that all of us should come to repentance that's what god's will is the bible tells us what god's will is jesus even said in john 3 16 at 3 script 3 17 he says god didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world but so that the world will be saved through jesus that's god's will that we be saved through Christ Jesus. Peter back it up with, with, with some in his epistle. Uh, uh, Paul back it up with some in his epistle to Timothy. And so it's, it's there. Do what the word of God says. Don't let the enemy distort the word of God. And don't let the enemy distort the will of God for you to be saved and you for, for you to do his will. It's not for you to do whatever you want to do on this earth. I know I'm throwing a lot of information at you right now. I'm just feel kind of fired up a little bit. I don't know what's going on. And so, um, and so uh there's a voice that tells us that the ways of God are whatever we think. Wrong again. The word of God is not altered. The will of God is not for you to do whatever you want to do. And the ways of God is not whatever we think is right. You wrong, there's three strikes and you're out. God's ways are not whatever we think is right. God's ways are what his Bible says is right. See, whatever the Bible says is right, that's God's ways. Now, now that's the big thing. That's, that's like reading one scripture here, reading one over there and putting them all together and say, oh, this is what God means about this. Take, take marriage, for example. Read all the passages you can in the Bible about marriage and say, oh, this is God's ways. This is what he's saying about marriage. Wait a minute, back here he said this, and he brought it all the way on up and he said something else. Guess what? He put it still all together how God feels about marriage. Those are God's ways, not what we think. Not what, well, God left out something. No, God didn't leave out, or, or they or they left something out of the Bible. Nope, they didn't leave something out of the Bible. They didn't leave something out of what God told them to write. They didn't do it. They they it's all there. Everything there, and all of it is uh is all of it's relevant. The whole Bible is relevant. <laughs> That long, that's good. I jumped in 720. Yeah, I'm not teaching back to class today, so I ain't got to go. Uh, and so, all of it is relevant. All of the word of God is relevant. Uh, every single bit of it, all of it can be applied to your life. Let's not uh, let's not ignore any of it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, and so, the, the word of God is not altered. The will of God is not for us to do as we please. And the ways of God is not whatever we think is right. It's the exact opposite of those things. The Lord's sheep know his voice, and they will not follow the voice of a stranger. 
that's what Jesus says in John chapter 10. He said, my sheep know my voice. He said, a, a stranger's voice, they ain't gonna, they're not going to follow it, but they're going to flee away. They're going to flee. They're going to flee from a stranger's voice. But this just shows who, who is Jesus' sheep. Now, the word of God says that the, the Lord's sheep know his voice. And so if a voice is telling you something contrary to the word of God, that's not Jesus Christ telling you that. You know what I'm saying? That ain't the Lord. I see, I see false teachers and false preachers, and I and I think they're doing it for deceitful gain, man. I think that they're doing it to, they're doing it for money, they're doing it for fame. I don't think they're doing it in obedience to God. I, I, I'm gonna be real with you, man. I'm gonna be real with you. What I do, I do it in obedience to God's, whatever God say. Uh, it ain't. It, now, and it might, I might be saying a wrong thing right now. I might be saying this. Is a, now, here's a disclaimer. I might be wording this wrong or saying it wrong. But I don't do it for the sake of love. I do it in obedience. My first goal, not, not my first. My first goal is obedience to God. My second goal is love. See, because when people when when people say, I'm going to do it for love, they can go and disobey God or ignore the word of God. Or change the word of God and say, I'm doing it for love. Doing it for love. Now, partner, my first thing is obedience to God first and then love. You know what? Why is obedience to God first and then love? Because Jesus says in Matthew 22, the first and great commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. And Jesus says in, in uh, uh, John 14, 15, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. See there? If you love me, you will obey my commandments. So I love the Lord first, and I obey the Lord first and foremost. And then I do everything in the world for the sake of love. But it's never going to be the opposite. It's never going to be love and then obedience. Obedience is always first in my mind. What the Lord want me to do? What the Lord say? What the Lord tell me to do? What's the Lord's will? What's the Lord's word? What's the Lord's standard? What's the Lord's ways? And then when I say, all right, now this is what the Lord says about this. Then I say, how can I obey the Lord in love? See there? How can I do what the Lord say obediently while doing everything in love? But it'll never be I'm doing in love and, and, and disobey the word of the Lord. I just can't rock like that. My conscience don't allow me to ignore the word of God and do something for the sake of love. You know what I'm saying? And also, my conscience don't allow me to obey the word of God and then do something not in love. You know, I always got to still do it in love, but my obedience to God is first. And so I hope I'm not confusing anybody with that. And that's how I feel about it. Do everything in love, but the first commandment is obey God's commandments. Because you say you love me, you keep my commandments, and you got to love him first. Uh, the Lord's sheep know his voice, and they will not follow the voice of a stranger. I'm not going to let you go right now. It's almost, it's 7.25. Therefore, the Lord's, Sheep know his voice, and they will not follow the voice of a stranger. You hear me? Therefore, let's stick to what the word of God says. Disregard what somebody else say that is wrong or that is altered, that is incomplete, that is that is not really true. Get you some resources and check it out if you have any questions. Talk with some people. Watch some sermons. Watch watch some sermons of some credible witnesses. Watch Corey Minor. Watch Voter Balkum. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, watch Cliff. Watch uh, Frank Turek, crossexamine.com. These guys study the word. They're not doing it for selfish gain. You know what I'm saying? Let's stick to the word of God, what the word says. Let's stick to what the Lord promises. There's a lot of promises in the Bible, and God is still keeping promises. That's why I say not what he promised with a D on the end, but what he promises. Let's stick to the words, what the Lord promises, and let's stick to the Lord's standard. The lower standard trumps all other standards. The lower standard exceeds every everything his everything you can possibly think of. The lower standard exceeds that. We don't need to to come up with a different standard for the modern uh, society or today's generation. I guarantee you, all of it can be found right there in the Word of God. The foundation must be the Word of God. That must be the standard at all times, 100% of the time. And if you go from there, making that your standard, you cannot go wrong. As long as the word of God is your standard. 
Let's stick to the word, what it say. Let's stick to the Lord, what he promised. Let's stick to the Lord's standard, his ways and his will. Amen. Father God in heaven, this is the name of the Lord Jesus. God, I thank you for your word this morning. God, I thank you, Lord, that um, you put it on my heart to share with the people this morning whatever you whatever you desire, Lord God. If there's anything I said, God, that you don't want uh, them to hear, Lord, that I shouldn't or that I added, that, that you, that you, God, remove it at your will, Lord God. If there's something that I neglected to say or something that I left out, Lord God, or didn't mention, Lord, I pray that you would add it to them later, Lord God. Add it to them later on today or whenever your time is right, Lord God, because your time is perfect, Father, in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, if we do whatever we're doing today, God, I pray for your grace, your favor, and your mercy over our lives and over our families, Lord. I pray for your 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 wisdom to 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 intrude into our minds, Lord God, and to cause us to 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 discern between good and evil and to cause us, Lord God, to have a have a yearning for your truth, Lord God, and to have a, a desire, Lord, to obey your truth and to live according to your truth, Lord God. But God, don't allow the enemy to deceive us any longer, Lord God. But speak your word to us. Help us to understand who you are, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, that's it for morning cup of Jesus. I didn't mean to go that long, but I did. If the Lord is willing, we're going to be right back here tomorrow morning around the same time. Amen. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. God bless you. Enjoy your day. Thank you.